Uh, start off with the main things. Rick George, Athletic Director of the Year. Wow, that is awesome, isn't it? He is, he is doing a heck of a job with all the sports, uh, all the programs here. Uh, men's basketball team opened up in the, with the tournament tonight. Uh, the women plays Drake on Friday. First time in 11 years both programs advanced to the tournament. Also, the ski team won the championships, which is awesome. But if I start skiing now, I get off the snowmobile. The tennis team is 12-3. and three. Awesome. Uh, the golf, lacrosse, and track uh, and field teams are off the strong starts as well. Spring game, April 27th. Uh, we're still waiting on television to see. Uh, we know ESPN is uh, dealing with the draft, and uh, we're waiting on probably Fox and uh, still Pac-12 to, to see what they're going to do so we could announce this thing and, and get these tickets sold out. We're going to sell out the spring game. Uh, students of the week. Uh, Vanna Watson, freshman safety. Uh, Nikhil Webb Walker, sophomore, I saw the linebacker. Uh, journalism major, first guy. Second guy, economics major, which is great. Okay, here we go. Now, I got these depth charts out just in case you guys ask me about that. Good to be back. Had uh, two really, 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 really good practices. And I'm so uh, excited about this season. I'm excited about this staff. You guys just talked to the OCDC, right? Yes, They're really good, aren't they? Personable. Um, communication is tremendous, how they're relating and the re their relatability to the team. The staff, to me, is uh, phenomenal from, from top to bottom. And uh, I think we still got uh, maybe one more piece that we're going to add significantly. But I'm so excited about what I'm seeing out there. Let's go. Hey, Coach, how are you? Go ahead. Not a two-parter, but I know you like one at a time. Yeah. Uh, so the first one is, at the start of this set in. I like your haircut. Let's do this right here. Thank you. <laughs> Appreciate that. I like your shoes. Thank you, sir. Um, has it started to set in for you that this could be your last year coaching your kids? Yeah, it's been. It, it, it set in uh, quite some time ago. I mean. I'm a real dad, which means that we have a tremendous relationship, which means that we communicate often, uh, daily, and uh, we can't wait to take our son's vacation this, this weekend uh, when spring break commits. So I can't wait to, so we can talk about other things in life that, that our plans and our preparations. But it's, it's phenomenal. I think it's been a tremendous journey. And uh, I think Shador played four games without me when I went when I went out with my leg injury. That's it in his entire life, which is crazy. So I'm thinking about it. Also, Shallow says every time I mention Shador to make sure I mention him, that he's in the first round as well. That's what he told me to make sure. The follow-up would be years from now when they're talking about what it was like to be coached by you, what would you hope they say? Nah, I don't care what they say. I, I know what they're going to say, but uh, you guys ask them that. I, I pretty much know. I know my kids like the back of my hand. I know my daughter. She just came to meet me right after practice with a big smile and a hug. That meant that she needed some money for the trip. <laughs> <laughs> so we just went up there and made that exchange. We cut through the small talk and that was it. So she was going to get ready to part in a little bit. And I know she needed some money just by her presence. Yeah. No, my you. kids. Brian Allen, yes, sir. The camera. Also, a two part of it. Um, would it be safe to say that going into spring last year, you kind of knew that? a lot of that roster was not going to be here. Oh, most definitely. You guys knew too, but it's funny that what I said is a problem. Well, but, but <laughs> You know, why, why is that? When I say what everybody's thinking, why is it a problem? What's like problem? I say some things about the offensive line last year, I wasn't derogatory to them. Right. I just said, we gonna, I said every, the same that everybody was thinking watching the game. Why is it a problem? I'm just asking everybody. Why is it a problem when I say what you think? You're probably a little oversensitized and worried about other I like that. So that's not my problem. No. That's your problem. Okay. Is, is your but, coach in them that we're not? Nah, I, mean, I don't know about that. I don't know about that, but you you know, you got the power of the pen and now the, the, the fingers and all that. It's just, uh, that sounded really bad. But uh, <laughs> you have power. It sounded really bad. You have power. <laughs> so my, my lead into that is, that, I mean, you went into last one kind of knowing yeah. this is not going to be our team, but this year, exactly. I would imagine, I mean, the group that's here, you feel much better about it. So I'm, truly, I'm curious, truly so. Do you feel that you guys are going to be much further ahead 
Well, we already had. Yeah. You, you already had. I mean, this time last year, we darn near just met everybody. We pretty much we had a gauge on everybody. We knew what they were capable of and what they weren't capable of. Um, this year, you're just trying to make sure the pieces fit. You know what you have. You know the depth that you have, and you know several other, several other pieces are going to be added um, as soon as the spring is over. You know that's going to happen this summer, and we already know. Some names you may not know, but we already do. So it's going to be phenomenal. It's going to be phenomenal. Coach Collins, the post. So Livingston, his experience with the Bengals, obviously Sherman, decades in the NFL. Keep going. I, keep going. I, I haven't mm-hmm. seen that. Trend. No, 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 stop. Keep going. No, no. We got several other guys from the NFL. Keep going. How do you see all the NFL experience translating to this? this, this how can you tell somebody where to go if you haven't been there? It's hard for you guys to tell me how to get to your crib, you know, if you hadn't been there, but that's where you live. It's easy to get that way, right? And it's, it's these kids today, man, they're not, it's not how we grew up. Our parents said, because I said so, and you took it. Uh, they, why? Why? Prove it to me, show me. Like, it's the show me type of young generation, and, and prove it to me generation. Let me see your credentials type of generation. So when you compose a staff, that pretty much embodies the NFL and where they're directed to, that is phenomenal. I think uh, eight, eight out of the 11 staffers either played or coached in the NFL. And that's phenomenal. Then you throw me in, it's nine. That's just tremendous to me. It really is. Coach, when we spoke in Utah, one of the last things we talked about was running the football and the importance True and that. the emphasis that you were going to put on it this offseason. You yes. told us that running the football was 1A and stopping the run was 1B and you didn't know which order. How did you go about addressing that this offseason? Uh, we, we, we were trying to address that. We were trying to address that alone for, for some time now. It's like, you, as a coach, you know your strengths, you know your weaknesses, you know what you got. You know, just like as a man, as a human being, as a woman and a man, you know your strengths and weaknesses and you know what you possess. You know you got to overdress yourself if you're not handsome. Right, <laughs> you got to, you know, got to cause a diversion and you know highlight yourself other places, and that's what we did. Um, but sooner or later, they found the flaws, the tremendous flaws. But we feel as though we addressed a multitude of the needs. Um, we could use a little more depth at the linebacker position, uh, but shoot, the guys are they're fighting their butts off right now. They get to the ball, they're doing what we need them to do. Um, but we know what we still have coming. We know how the situation that we're going to address. So I'm pretty good, not just with the starters, but the depth, because that's the tremendous uh, asset that you need to to play uh, the amount of games that we plan on playing this year. It's not going to be just 12. As a quick follow-up, sorry, not the mic. Mm-hmm. All in the casket, right? Kind of shut him down at the end of the year last year. Well, all the one ready. Right? I didn't shut him down. He wasn't ready. Meant the yeah. decision was made to shut him yeah, down. Yeah, yeah. Right? He was. He also wasn't ready. So now, how does he look and how excited he are you? He looks good. Him? Shoot, he looks good. But you, you got to understand, I can look at this depth chart and say, Joe Dillon looks good too, right? <laughs> like like uh, Savion looks good too. That young freshman, he's tr- tremendous as well. So and we may add to that room as well because you never know. See, the thing about coaching these days, you, you got to think way down the street. You know, you don't just think here. So you just think, oh, my God, these kids are – Wonderful that you have, but somebody's going to jump in the portal at the spring. They're going to do that, and you got to prepare for that stuff. So you you prepare for that as well as uh, embrace what you have. So it's a different game right now. Totally different game. Hey, Coach, uh, back around to the press. Uh, as a father, as a coach, you hear back and fracture, and it's scary. Uh, yeah. How's she doing? How's she recovering? And- Good. He's awesome. He, he really is. He's recovered uh, immensely. I think he's seven times better. Um, his back is. That's how many linemen we got, right? <laughs> <laughs> New linemen. Was it seven or eight? Eight. eight? He's eight times better. I'm serious. Than his back is <laughs> than he was last year. I mean, the way he's feeling. <laughs> he really is. So we're good. And then I guess just follow up on that. It was with the, you know, he's a few year. He's going to be projected the high draft pick next year. What steps Shadow, let's, let's just get this straight. Let's get the elephant in the room. Shadow would have been a high draft pick this year. Okay, let's just stop the foolishness and you get mad when I tell you. Um, the only reason I know that because don't you think I know people in the NFL? I'm sorry. Um, I played for how many years? 14, 
Um, got a gold jacket at the crib, I think. I think I know some people. You know the Jerry Jones, is that, you know, Arthur Blanks. Yeah, I know some people in the game. The Roger Goodells, you know, I know some people. So when I speak, I'm not just throwing stuff out of my head. I'm throwing stuff based on knowledge. So let's just get that straight. If Shador would have gone in the draft this year, he probably would have been the second. Uh, he wouldn't have been the first quarterback off the board. I think he had the ability, but he probably would have been the second quarterback off the board. Let's just get that straight. I guess. Just think I had that. to bet for a minute. I'm sorry. No, that's fine. I, I guess, had to get that out. What? 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 Is there maybe something that you want to see him elevate just a little bit more? Yeah. Yeah. I, I want to see him um, just take it to another level. It's not something that I can say. You got to do better than that. Because, see, when I get on him, sometimes it's too premature because I go back and watch the film, and I say, okay, I see I see why you had to hold the ball right there. I see, well, we, we blew a darn route. Uh, I think it was one of the <laughs> one of the games at the end of the game. Uh, yeah. I think that's where he threw the pick. We had two guys running to each other. You guys didn't even know that, right? Yeah. We had two guys running to each other on under routes. <laughs> that's why he had to. So you don't understand that stuff. That's why he had to hold the ball and he digressed a bit, then just threw it up for Jesus. And I love Steve Cody. Hi, Coach. Adam Lister Tiger, 24 My Sports. man. Good to see you. How you doing, sir? Doing well, doing well. Uh, we had a chance to talk to Phil Lodeholt the other day. He mentioned that he spent some quality time with you before he yeah. got During that process, what, what made him stand out to you? Shoot. His knowledge, his thought process, his... Uh, the way when we met, we met at the crib, matter of fact, in uh, Texas. Just the way he came to the interview ready and prepared and what he could add to the room. Uh, he just had a commanding presence, not just about his size, but his relatability to the young men in today's game, as well as his ability um, to recruit. Because you got to look at all that, not just the coach. Can he recruit? And that's the things you really got to think about now. Uh, and he checked every darn box and then some. And now to see him at work, to see how they respond to him, to see how attentive he is, uh, detailed, and how detail oriented he is. He's a, shoot, he's a gem. Thank God we got him. Because he is undarn believable. And those guys work their butts off for him and he holds them accountable, truly. Plus, he was a dog, man. Like, he was a dog. Like, so all you had to do was go in the film room and just turn the film on and say, uh, let me critique this tackle. He, he didn't even tell him it was him. Then you see him what he does and all that, and then you say, oh, shoot, that was you? So he's been there and done that, and that, that gives him instant credibility in his room. But his commanding voice, and Gunner is doing a wonderful job, the system. He's been with me since Jackson, so that room is, is, is going to be good. It's really going to be good. Those kids are just nasty, man. They, they don't play, man. It was a fight today, good one too. I told him when the helmet's off, you gotta stop, you gotta stop. But it was a good one today. God, it was a good one. I don't advocate that, but when it happens, I'm, uh, I see you got that thing and you, you got that, that dog in him, man. And it was offense versus defense. It was, they went at it today, man. And I like that. I like that, I don't like them to fight, not, not whatsoever, but I like that intensity, you know, in a days that we're not even padded. So, but Phil is unbelievable, man. Thank God we got it. Yeah, Coach, I love how you're raw, you're candid, you hold mm -hmm. players accountable, but now after one season of coaching at this level, mm -hmm. what did you see about yourself that you would want to do it better, at a game day coach specifically? Um, let's focus on this level first. You said that like this was like Jesus was on the field you know, <laughs> playing. This level is this level. Um, this level has players that are a little better um, on the front line than it was at Jackson, but the skill positions, I think, are equal. equal. Quarterbacks are a little different as well. They're phenomenal as well. But this level is, is this level. I, I played at extreme level. Remember that? Oh, yeah. You have 14 of them. So I understand this level. Um, for me, in-game things that may happen, you, you can't prepare yourself for everything that you try to. But some things that you want to change, just the thought process going into it. Um, but it's, it's, it's going to be tremendous, much better communication. First of all, we have um, the microphones in the, in the helmets now. So the, the rec, you know, we can talk right to the quarterback and right to the linebacker and get the calls in. That's going to be phenomenal. That's going to help tremendously. I wish it was several guys on each side of the ball, which would be tremendous. 
but uh, end game type of things. You can't be prepared for them, but you got to think through all of them. And I think we may have missed the boat on a couple occasions. But overall, I think it was a good season when it comes to that. But I'm very harsh on myself, much more harsh than you guys are. But we're, we're, we're going to win. I know that. You know that. We're going to win. Hi, Coach. There's a few buckies. How you doing, Coach? sweetheart? How she, she, she is awesome. We know each other. I came in there for autograph signing into a restaurant, and she was the hostess to the hostess and did a great, wonderful job. So I remember her face. Mm -hmm. I see you again. Amen. But I'm just curious, how important is it for you to know, like, the pasta personalities and how your players operate to, like, the, like for the success of this team? Tremendously. Yeah. Because you know what buttons to push. You know who's who, what's what. You know uh, fundamentally how these kids are and, and what gets them going. You, and you know that from their visits. And when you when they come and uh, they present themselves, but when they get on the field, and, see, I go in the weight room and I sit there and work out myself, but I'm watching them. So I got on, I go on the field, I run, you know, get my laps in, but I'm watching them. I'm watching how they respond to adversity. I'm watching how they act when they're tired. I'm, I'm act, watching how they relate to their other players. I sit in meetings often, watch how they uh, relate to the coach, how they uh, attention. To, do they pay attention to detail? I'm always watching to find out different things about our kids, because sometimes you 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 get a kid here and he's he's so much more than you thought he would be, and sometimes it's the opposite. Uh, but you got to know that, so you don't put him in situations where he's not going to succeed. You want to make sure we put him in situations where they they're very successful on and off the field. Great question, though. Coach, uh, Jack Harlow with that. Jack question. Harlow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just with the incoming freshmen and the transfers that are here, just mm -hmm. have, have you seen those new guys kind of mesh with the other guys that are already here? Oh, wonderful, especially the darn old line. I mean, they're everywhere together. Um, I think because uh, Rob uh, took uh, the safeties out yesterday. I think they put the dinner last night and had a wonderful time. But the coaches have to establish relationships with, with all the team. That's the most important thing, the coaches in the relationship with their groups. But these guys, I told you, it's, it's, it's always tough for older people to get along, not, not kids and young adults. They, they get along quite easily, especially when they find a commonality. Like who works hard, they hang together. Who don't, they hang together. You know, who does their homework, their schoolwork, they hang together. Who don't, they hang together. Like, uh, it's easy for me to know who you are when I'm in the cafeteria, because I eat, what am I trying to do every day with the kids? When I see what table they sit at. If you sit at the table with another head that don't want to work at it, pretty much, I, that, you tell me that's who you are. So uh, it, it's easy to dissect that, but it's, it's very vital to, to find that out. A couple more. Go ahead, Mark. Hey, it's Mark Tisla, Denver Gazette. When you gather this team out in the meeting room, what do you see in that room now that you didn't in your Some room? dogs. And, and as a result, I assume you see more talent. Yes. As a result, talk to them differently in terms of no. goals and expectations? I don't talk to them differently. No, the, the, the standard is the standard, regardless of who's out there. Um, these young men really understand the purpose, and they understand the goals. Like, um, I think we had a message today. We, I don't know if um, Darius put it out yet, but we were talking about the different, how we break down 100 players, and 10 of them, I believe, we said that um, they, they got it. They know they got it. They're willing to work. And I think it was what 25 of them there is that figured uh, they think they got it, they think they're on the right path, but eh, you don't know. Then you got another 20 that's looking to get out, but they haven't got an opportunity. Like I, I mapped out the collection of 100 young men in every room, not just our room and where they are. But when I look out there now, I see guys hungry, eager, and have a commitment and willing to sacrifice whatever it is to get to the next level. And their goal is to get to the NFL. And my goal is to prayerfully get them there as well as the education. Uh, but these guys are different, man. They, they, it's some different cats in there right now. There's some different coaches up there as well. It's, it's, it's a tremendous difference. Going back to what you asked me about coaching, that's another thing that I learned. Uh, you got to really take your time and truly be prayerful to, to understand who's in your room and who you bring in.
sometimes you think it clicks, but it just don't click. It just don't work. And that's not saying a guy's a bad guy, a uh, bad person, but it may not work for you. It may not work for me. And sometimes it did. That does not mean that they can't go somewhere and soar. Um, like the Atlanta Falcons, I, it, it worked for me athletically, but winning-wise, it didn't. So I, we went and, and went to San Francisco, and it worked out tremendously, as well as Dallas. So some things that <laughs> initially it may not, and that's what transpired um, a little bit with the staff and uh, some of the players. But I feel so darn good right now about the staff, about the team, about the city, about about everything that we're doing right now. We're going to practice three on Friday. I think we're going to pad up Friday because you take two practices in, you just hit each other. I, I have, I, I know what's going to go down Friday. I really do. We may have to have the police out there Friday. <laughs> it's going down Friday, I promise you that. These guys are a little different. Did you expect too much of them last year? No, I didn't. I knew my team. I knew them. I, I knew what we had. I knew what we didn't have. I, I think truly we could have put them in better situations to be successful. Um, I think Everybody, including the staff, wasn't built for the noise. Mm -hmm. What I mean by the noise, everybody's not built for the moment. Mm -hmm. You got to understand that. Like, and shoot, we took the moment to the greatest height. Like, it was like, shoot, and we plan on doing that again. But everybody's not built for that stage. That stage uh, comes with tremendous responsibility. And you got to get young men that are used to that and committed to that and want it and uh, relish it that opportunity to be on that stage. And they're ready to grab that microphone and hit that note. I mean, you gotta have those type of guys that I feel as though the goal is to get eight dogs on the side of the ball, seven or eight dogs that you know what you're gonna get on Saturday. And uh, we, we got some guys that I'm, 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 I'm happy about. Let me address something else that I think I need to address. I don't know who did it, I don't know if they're in here. If they are, you can just raise your hand like we, we did when we were in nursery <coughs> here. There was an article that came out that said, I don't go on visits. He's not here, Coach. Okay. My approach is totally different than many coaches' approach. Um, um, sometimes I look, I'm a businessman as well, so I try to save our university money every darn chance I get. So for me to go to, let's just say I'm going to Florida and I'm visiting uh, whatever school, IMG. You don't think those coaches are going to be a little upset if I don't come by the school down the street? You, th you don't think it's going to be pandemonium if, if, <laughs> if or, uh, I'm going to get naysayed if I don't go another 45 minutes? Then if I go to that one, then I go, uh, well, I didn't come to that school. Now the coach is mad, so he's not going to let the kid come because he's mad because I chose that go to that school over that school. See, other coaches, they can do that, but I can't. I can't. And I've really pretty much done a personal survey. I really, truly, in all my heart, believe that parents don't want me at their house. They want to come see my house. They want to see how I live, how I get down. They want to see what I got going on, what God has done in my life. I know when I was in college, I did not want Bobby Bowden in my house because I knew at the seven o'clock it was going to be rats and roaches on parade doing their thing. <laughs> so that, that was just straight up, honestly. I did it. So uh, that never transpired. That never happened for me. And we target um, mostly guys that's in the portal. When do you make visits to portal guys' homes? Anybody do that? Do they do that? I, I don't do Anybody? Have you guys heard of that? I don't. I think when a guy is in his 20s and he has one or two more shots, he don't give a damn about the picture. He don't give a damn about the parade that you want to take him on. He wants to know, okay, how are you going to use me? How can you help me get to the league? And what am I going to get paid? That's it. That's the world we live in now. And I, don't, I have never heard one guy say, I chose this college because this coach came by my crib. Have you? It's different now. The parents, I love them. And I want to show them Boulder. I want them to see this and how beautiful it is and why I'm so eager and how much I love this city and this, this state and this team. I want them to see that because guess what? That's where the kid is coming. Kid coming here. 
going there is just showcase for me. This is blowing money. It's blowing a bag. Don't make sense. And I can't do the things other coaches can do. You know what? I'm Coach Brad. And I didn't stutter when I said it. <laughs> Coach, we got Shadur and Jordan. Are you good? Shadur, let me see. Shadur, bring Shadur in. Shadur, yeah. That was a great ending. It was a great yeah. ending. I, 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 <laughs> I had to get it off my chest. Uh, Jordan's here, Coach. George, come on. Where's it? Hey, where's the big belt? He's coming. Mr. Sapp just texted me good morning. I mean, good afternoon, that's what he said. Come here. Good. Were you out there fighting today? Nah. <laughs> you, you heard what he said. I ain't fight today. <laughs> we I fight every play, though. I didn't see you driving somebody down the field 15 yards trying to push him and then uh, overly aggressive. Well, that did I, I did see that? that? Yeah, that I did do. That was me. I take credit for that one. Do you understand that difference, what he just said? Y'all didn't catch that. I just did that so y'all understand the difference. This man is different. Appreciate you, Coach. Love you, boy.